sorry, I didn't see you there. I hope you haven't been waiting long. Now you're here about the Chick Tract, right? Now you'll just have to give me a couple minutes. This one is out of print, so I need to go down to the vault. I already found the key, so worry not. Uh, this won't take very long. Now I haven't read this tract, so if there's anything unsavory, such as about uh, children that are mistreated or other minorities that are mistreated, I'm not really sure if that's something that's in here. So if you are worried about that, we can check out something else from the library. Otherwise, take a seat and wait. I'll be right back in just a second. Now I don't think I'm going to be able to let you take this with you. This is something that is out of print, so we're going to have to read this together. But don't worry, you can relax, close your eyes, and I'll describe what's happening in the pages. So first we have, oh gosh, I forget this dog's name. Jack Chick draws this dog that looks very comical. It's, it's something like Spot Fang, Fang, that's his name, Fang. So we have Fang here. It's just a very funky, specific looking character that he has, kind of recurring sometimes. And we have something that looks a bit like a bear, but I think it's supposed to be a wolf. And in the background, there's a tower silhouette um, kind of illuminated from behind by the moon. From the tower, we have some voices saying, I can hardly wait. It's almost midnight. Then we see this group of vampires, which they, they just, you, you can't really notice anything too weird until you see that one of the vampires is Blade. Like, Blade, the vampire. <laughs> and then there's also, for some reason, Gandalf, I think it is with a really comically large nose. I didn't, I, is Gandalf a vampire? And I just didn't know. And so we have this uh, vampire woman with her hand up, just looking really excited about this situation. Tell us, doctor, is she pregnant? Vampira is this child. We must celebrate a new beginning. When will this great event take place? If my calculations are correct, and they always are, the child will come forth during the full moon on a most holy night. Halloween silence! There's more. Now all the vampires are really excited about this. I honestly have no idea where this chick track is going. In room 13, I summon the ancients in the dark world come forth. The room was filled with smoke. So we see this 13, it looks like a chamber door. There's a cat, a black cat in front of it with smoke coming out, my goodness, Jack. I was terrified at what I saw coming through the smoke. He was the Prince of Darkness himself. I thought I was going to die. He told me that this coming child shall have all the powers greater than all of us combined. Now, as he's saying this, we're in another panel. We still see the silhouette of the tower, but it started to rain and there's actually a serpent around a tree. I wonder if that's any kind of reference to Genesis. Now we see through the window, um, there's a really bony mouse. Like you can see his, his spine <laughs> through, through his skin. And then there's a, an owl. Both of them are hanging out, watching what's going on. Which is weird, you would think the owl would just eat the mouse. He said we must carefully teach him the ancient ways. Then he gave me his name. What? What? Tell us! Who? Under the pain of death, you must not speak his name until he's born. Yes, yes, but we must know. What is his name? Igor. Now the face that Jack has drawn I think he's just the way that it's said, I think he's trying to make it seem like really spooky, but the guy looks scared. His hair is standing up uh, on end. He looks very frightened for some reason. I, I'm not sure. Again, this is a bit silly, so we'll see. Okay, so I was expecting Igor to be, you know, coming into the party, just the way that he looks so scared, like he's gonna eat everybody or something, but no. There's a crash of a lightning uh, strike. And then it says the coven disbanded and silently slipped away into their coffins. Nine months later, October 31st, there's a new party. There's some bats. 
There's Osama Bin Laden. Did you guys know Osama Bin Laden was a vampire? Because, wow, wow. when was this made? Because this is, I mean, it's got Blade. I mean, I know Blade was a comic, but it does have, you know, the actor from the movie. This is 2006. Yeah, I mean, Osama Bin Laden. I don't, I, <laughs> wow. Igor has been born the chosen one who will unite all covens, giving us incredible power. Uh, when do we see him? <sighs> Just before his first bite. Over the following years, Dragon Masters, Grand Lodge Leaders, and the mysterious, quote, nine unknown men, unquote, teach little Igor their darkest secrets. Now, who are these Dragon Masters? I, I don't know. Grand Lodge leaders, when we see dragon, we see grand law. I don't know. It's just really giving KKK. I'm not sure where this comes from at all. So there's a coffin. We're assuming that it's Igor. There's a wizard. It's a guy that looks like a wizard, you know, a caricature of a, you know, a typical uh, wizard look. And he's dressed in black. And then our main vampire is here as well. Shh. He's sleeping. He's a great hope. I shudder to think of what will happen if he fails. Will Igor fail his great mission? The great prince is summoned. And then it's the devil with, you know, the, the horns and stuff. What's the devil's voice? I don't know. He shall not fail. <laughs> the search begins for a virgin to be Igor's first victim. What was with the whole gotta search for a virgin thing? You know, it's kind of, I don't know, it's kind of weird. Like, imagine if you wouldn't eat any meat unless it was an animal that was a virgin. Just how bizarre, right? You just would never, you would never even think about that. Like, oh, I can't have these eggs. <laughs> the chicken wasn't a virgin, you know? It's just such a bizarre requirement, <laughs> you know what I mean? So we see there's a, a girl walking in a forest and these two creepy men, which I think from the context we're going to assume have to do with... Uh, the, the vampire coven. Two innocent months, a kind and innocent victim is chosen. So they're taking photos of her, click, click. Ah, oh, that's her. She appears helpless and has no idea she's being watched. Now, how do they know that she's kind and innocent? How do they know she's a virgin? She could be in the forest burying somebody that she just murdered, right? We, we have no idea. She's just walking in the forest, just being herself. And, oh yeah, you know, this is somebody that looks like a good uh, victim. Kind of reminds me of those stories that, uh, that people post these clips of these books that are written by men that don't know how to write for women or don't know how to write women. They don't know about women's bodies. And one of them mentioned that somebody had the legs of a virgin and he could tell because the, the legs were hairless. <laughs> what? <laughs> so what? The first time you have sex, suddenly you grow hair on your legs. <laughs> okay. So I'm wondering still, how, how do they know that she's a virgin? How do they know she's kind? And how do they know she's innocent? So not sure. Just some lady wandering around the woods in the middle of nowhere. She could be lost or again, she could be a murderer herself. So the two guys are, the, the two vampire guys, they're looking at these, I guess, Polaroids by candlelight, and they look really excited. Mmm, lovely Nick. What's her name? Um, that's Faith, sir. Ha, <laughs> Faith. Ha, ha, ha. She'll need lots of faith this Halloween. <laughs> I almost feel sorry for her. So we have the wizard again. Tell me, young Igor, where do you bite? And Igor is pointing to... It's almost like a pin the tail on the donkey kind of drawing, but it's of a, of a person. And he says, right here. And why there? Uh, the carotid artery is there. Well done. You are now ready. So the cars begin approaching the mansion. There's people talking in the cars, but I don't know who they are, so we'll just give them any voice. Will we see him tonight? <laughs> yeah, finally, we'll look upon our great hope. <laughs> I'm so excited. All of you have traveled far for this occasion and at long last. I give you Igor. So I'm assuming it's what, his ninth birthday, 10th birthday, it's Halloween night. 
and they're all saying, oh, congratulations, yay, bravo, he's coming. And Igor looks kind of like, um... so Igor's here and he's looking like the redheaded mascot from Mad Magazine, but with fangs. Wonderful. And he says, hi guys. And they're all gasping, is that him? As a group, they begin casting spells against Faith, their poor little victim. I don't know which vampire movies Jack Chick has been watching. What spells are being cast? You just like walk up behind your victim and you bite him in the neck. I mean, that's what happened to me here. You know, you can see it. That's that's all it is, right? What what spells are being cast? Why are there wizards involved? Why was Gandalf there? Why was Osama bin Laden there? Is Osama bin Laden a wizard? Is that what this is? I can't go any further with this train of thought because it's gonna turn into some pretty dark jokes. So we're just gonna move on. Fill in the blank as you will, okay? Again, we are seeing just people discussing things, but we don't know who's actually talking, so. We're just gonna make up some voices. We must not fail tomorrow night. Is everything prepared? Of course. Her dad is in Chicago at his father's funeral. Her mom is in the hospital, but she wants Faith to pass out candy and comics. Uh, will Faith be alone? No, her aunt is there, but she'll be drugged by the time Igor arrives. What? <laughs> Okay, so if we're if we're just drugging strangers, then why do we need to cast spells? Like, ooh, you know, <laughs> alakazam, alarohypnol. Like, what are we doing, <laughs> right? Let me see her picture again. Faith is getting ready to meet the little children with treats while her aunt watches television. Now, Faith, first of all, Faith's aunt looks exactly just like a black cat. So I don't know what that that's supposed to mean. But Faith is on her knees praying in front of what I think is a box of Chick Tracks that she's gonna hand out for Halloween. I really hope that's the case. I hope that Jack Chick has put Chick Tracks in his Chick Tract for her to pass out to the kids. What's Faith's voice? Help me, Lord. I wanna win at least one soul for you tonight. In Jesus' name, amen. Wait a minute, is that the Bible she's carrying? Oh, no, 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 it's just some old book, sire. I, I doubt if she even reads it. Well, <laughs> if it's her Bible, I doubt she even reads it. This could be a problem. Uh, nonsense, what could go wrong? Now, wait a minute, so her name is Faith. They were making jokes about her needing Faith, and then this is something they're watching this woman for, what, several months at least. They know where she lives. They know her aunt is going to be there. They know they have to drug her aunt and all of this other stuff. They're casting a bunch of spells directed at her. And he finally notices in the picture, there's a Bible. So this one picture that they have of her that he's looked at before. Now he notices a Bible, which is a pillantly big problem. So I don't know, we'll check it out. By sunset, the kids start arriving. So Faith is handing out chick tracks and that's it. And it actually says twinkle tweet. So we'll go with that voice. Twinkle tweet. Look at you. Here's some candy and little comics. Oh my goodness. She's handing out chick tracks. Well, thank you. God bless you. I like this house. Uh, not once you read the tract. And so then we see somebody is looking at her house from, I guess, like a tree line. So this, it's kind of, I mean, it is a good setup. I, I would say it is kind of ominous looking. So good job with that, Jack Chick. Guess who lurks in the darkness as the last of the children leave? Thank you, good night. Rats, it's starting to rain. Why tonight? Now Faith is talking to her aunt who passed out in front of the television on the kitchen table, I guess. I'm quitting. It's getting late and Aunt Wilma, ding dong. Oh, well, just one more. Oh, I guess it was Igor. I used the wrong voice. So she opens the door and Igor, again, he's supposed to be nine or ten. He's taller than she is. So I don't know which Prince of Darkness, but apparently one that plays basketball. And what are you supposed to be? He's cold. I'm a vampire. 
Well, come in, I'll get you a cup of hot chocolate. Oh, please, Faith, please, guys, please, everybody, please, let's cast some spells that this is not gonna end with Faith converting Igor to Christianity. I will cut my own throat with this skeleton key, okay? Let's, please, please, please. He's pointing at his face and he says, I can't drink that stuff. I only drink blood. You're silly. No, I'm real. I'm Igor, the child of the devil. Look at my fangs. <laughs> well, Igor, God sent you to me tonight. And so now she's whipping out her Bible and oh, the cat is freaking out seeing Igor, so that's kind of cool. No, the Prince of Darkness sent me. You should be terrified of me. Why? God gave me a promise in his, this book. God hath not given us the spirit of fear, but of power and of love and of a sound mind. That's from 2 Timothy 1.7. You can have that one for free. That's madness. The devil rules and I've come to bite you. And then Faith, he's running at Faith. She holds up her hand. Jesus, please stop him. And I guess she throws him like with some chi power. And uh, she's got this light shining on her from above. So, you know, nice, nice touch there, Jack. Well, how'd you do that? I didn't do anything. Jesus did it. Do you want Jesus to get rid of all that ugly stuff inside of you? Well, who, who's Jesus? Okay, Jack, this is the one time I will grant you that this character has not heard of Jesus. This is the one time. Now, I'm surprised because if you're the son of the devil, then I would assume naturally you would be informed about his, his main rival, right? You would be taught about him, but I, I guess not. And I will grant you this one time, Jack, one time. So now we're back to the scary tower. I just got a call. Igor is still inside her house. I bet I know what he's doing. He's enjoying his first bite. Our chosen one will lead us to victory. Faith prays for Igor and the devils leave. That's great. What else can Jesus do? Says Igor sitting on her chair or her couch and the cat now has a little heart coming from, I guess a thought bubble, but it's a heart. Uh, so now the cat likes Igor since Igor is now Christian. So what else can Jesus do? Well, forgive your sins and change your heart. Impossible. No witch, vampire, or Satanist could ever change. Uh, I mean, this isn't even religious. This is just like, like humans learning things and, and moving on, right? And having different ideas as they get older. So somebody kind of failed to teach Igor. They taught him biology, which is, a, you know, it's a start. So Faith is saying, now that's a big fat lie. Jesus can fix anyone, no matter what bad things you've done. And it recommends that we read a book called Lucifer Dethroned. So I guess we'll have to buy it, guys. So no matter what bad things you've done. And Igor says, huh? I don't get it. Blood has been shed for sins to be forgiven. So then it's talking about, you know, the crucifixion, etc. He died, but three days later, he rose from the dead and defeated Satan for you. Igor decides to trust Jesus instead of Satan. And then he asked Jesus to come in his heart and forgive him. It's happened. Jesus made me a new person. Thank God. Oh, did I say that? Yes. Well, I'm going to go back home and tell him what happened to me. Oh boy. So now Igor is going to go back and convert his coven of Osama bin Laden's to Christianity. I mean, this is just, it's bizarre. It's just bizarre. So he's back and he's, he's at the coven. There's all these vampires around him. And he says, wonderful news, everyone. Jesus saved me. They're screaming, no, <gasps> your fangs are gone. And so are my sins. This is a disaster. How could this happen? And then now Satan shows up. Master, why did you tell us that Igor was the promised one? And Satan just shrugs and says, I, uh, I lied. Cause that's what I do. Get over it. That's it. That's, that's it. 
That so Satan would rather waste people's time. So these are dedicated, right? These guys are dedicated to Satan. They've even allowed Osama bin Laden to join them, okay? And they're really dedicated to him to usher in this new time of the devil. They could have, right? They could have done that. But instead, Satan just wanted to waste their time with a lie instead of possibly, I don't know, prepare Igor against this? I mean, it just, it doesn't make sense. But that's really how a lot of Christians think, especially the evangelical Christians. It's this idea that Satan's just there because he's a jerk and he's there to waste your time and to get you off track. And that way you can run around in circles and eventually you die and go to hell. It, it just doesn't make any sense. You know, it just, it just doesn't. It doesn't make any sense. The way that they make it seem is, is like Satan is really doing stuff that's so counterproductive. I mean, how, how does this guy function at all? And part of the theology is that Satan had convinced a third of heaven to join him in a protest war against Yahweh and that Yahweh threw Satan and his supporters down into hell and that's where we get the devil and his, his demons. This guy doesn't seem like he can organize a picnic. He's just, he's just so petty, <laughs> you know? He's just so petty. It's such a weird thing that, that Christians think that the devil is this ridiculous and also that he's winning the world against, like, you know, when you're talking about the spiritual warfare that they believe in, where it's Christianity versus everybody else, it's Yahweh and Jesus versus the devil. They believe the devil is this ridiculously petty idiot and also that he's winning against God. It's just, it's bizarre. So now all the, um, all the, the vampires are arguing against each other, but it looks like, I, I don't know, I never watched Harry Potter, but of course I've seen some of the characters from the movie and it looks like one of them is one of the, the headmasters? I'm, I'm not sure. So anybody who's not looking at the screen, if you want to look at the screen because you know Harry Potter characters, please tell me if this is one of the Harry Potter characters. So now they're all arguing with each other. That's it. If you can trust Satan, then who can you trust? And then one of the, one of the vampire shrugs and says, Jesus? And then the main vampire says, shut up. And then it adds that the coven never recovered. I feel like Recovened could have done like some kind of joke there. And then we get a message from Faith. Kids, Jesus calls Satan the liar and the father of lies in John 8, 44. Stay away from him. He double crosses and destroys everyone he can. But Jesus can't lie because he's God and he wants to save you too. Then we all can be together in heaven. And so now it says, actually, there's usually there's that last page, but this is one, one before that. So it says, heaven or hell, the choice is yours. Believe in the Lord Jesus Christ, you should be saved. Please check the boxes below. Okay, guys, let's check them. I want to miss hell. Yes or no. Now, I know they mean like I want to avoid hell, but it sounds like, like, oh man, I really miss hell. <laughs> you know? Yeah, I guess, you know, I guess if I was the devil and I had power and I was out of hell, then I would be sad about that and think back about being hell. So yeah, I would like to be, you know, somebody as powerful as Satan, sure. Uh, I want my sins forgiven. Well, you haven't shown me that there are sins. I mean, this is such a bizarre thing to be giving to kids anyway, right? Because that's, that's the idea. She's talking to kids. This is one of those that you're supposed to hand out during Halloween and in fact it's supposed to be kind of funny because I received this in my trick-or-treat bag but then in the comic it references giving these out in the trick-or-treat bag oh yeah just like what really happened he 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 so I mean this is for children we never get to see what Igor did that was bad Faith talks about how bad he is but but that's it he's he's never explained what's so evil about him He's just a kid who was raised by a bunch of weirdos and he's never even killed anybody. This was supposed to be his first bite. So he's, he's not some kid that just is killing people. He's not, um, you know, they're not teaching him anything necessarily 
terrible or evil necessarily, right? But here's this this weird, you know, how if I'm a child reading this, how am I supposed to relate to this? Oh yeah, I'm just like Igor cuz I was raised drinking blood because this black wizard gave it to me. Like what this just such a weird a weird thing. So it, we're not showing any sins. I mean, even if we joke about, you know, oh, you know, we don't believe in sin and stuff as atheists. I mean, just there were no sins shown in this at all. Just none. And the last thing that we can check yes or no, I believe the Lord Jesus died for my sins. Why? Again, in this tract, we're not really given much story. I thought that we were going to go into, you know, Jesus died and then he rose again on the third day and this, that, and the other. It's one panel. God sent his son, precious blood, John 3, 16. He died, but three days later, he rose again and defeated Satan for you. That's it. That's all one panel. So we don't know what Igor actually did that was so bad. We don't know why Jesus is able to forgive, what we earn when we become Christian. This is such a bizarre tract. We were promised at the beginning of this, if you kind of look at the screen here for the tracks. It says, Over the Top, this Halloween tract by Jack Chick starts with a vampire story but ends with a straight gospel message as opposed to a gay gospel message, I don't know. But that's what it says, it's over the top. So I, I kind of was expecting something a little ridiculous along the lines of something in the beginning. Not Osama Bin Laden ridiculous, that, that's again, bizarre choice. Instead, we get this vampire boy who didn't do anything wrong, being told that he's a dirty sinner, and so he just agrees and repents, and that's it. Believe in Jesus. This, this has got to be, I mean, it was a fun read. I'll, I'll give Jack that, but bizarre. You know, I got to say, doing these chick tracks this year, it's, it's kind of like I'm putting more effort into creating this silly B-movie type of horror character. I'm putting more effort into doing that than I feel like Jack put into these Halloween tracks. These are just really... The only word I can keep coming up with is bizarre. It's so bad. It made no sense. And I feel like it kind of toes the line of it's so bad, it's good but we're still firmly planted over in the it's pretty bad territory. Let me know what you guys think and if you have any ideas why wizards were involved, why Gandalf is involved, why Harry Potter is involved. Now we understand that this type of Christian believes Harry Potter is the devil, it's satanic, witchcraft, etc. But what does this have to do with vampires? Vampires aren't witches. It's, it's just the whole thing is so weird. Blade makes sense, but Dark Wizards and Osama Bin Laden, I, I really, I don't know. Why does Igor have to look like the Mad Magazine guy? No idea. And we still don't find out what made Faith such a good choice for Igor's first bite. We have no idea why she was wandering around those woods. What do you guys think? On that note, if you want to post any comments about this, feel free to do so in the comment section below. And there's also a pinned comment that tells you different ways to reach me, like on Twitter, Discord, and also on Patreon, uh, where I share videos, updates, and uh, pictures that are for Patreon only, as well as a Patreon only live stream once a month. And you can join for as little as a dollar a month. But as always, guys, thanks for listening.